Mark, as we have this discussion now, we're in the still in the midst of the sort of at least the tail end of this pandemic, and I, I don't think uh, you know any any people have uh, delusion about how much of a toll it's taken, not just on people's physical health, but also on their mental health. And certainly, uh, I assume many of your patients, just as many of my patients, have experienced some of the struggles of. Um, overeating or turning to foods out of comfort that we all recognize are not in our best interest. I guess more broadly, w how much of a relationship do you see between food and mental health or emotional health, if we want to be even more broad? Well, this is really a, an underappreciated subject. Um, and the role of food and mood and cognitive function and behavior is, is so clear from the data, but it's mostly ignored by modern psychiatry. Uh, with the exception that there are there are now centers popping up at, at major institutions at Harvard, for example, there's a Department of Nutritional Psychiatry that's exploring the role of the microbiome in mental health. And there, the microbiome is determined by what we eat. Uh, at Stanford, there's the Department of Metabolic Psychiatry looking at how insulin resistance and sugar and poor metabolic health leads to poor mental health. So we do have a pandemic of chronic disease, a pandemic of COVID, and a pandemic of mental health issues in this country. It's, it's the biggest source of disability, the biggest cost driver, not necessarily direct healthcare costs, but indirect loss of productivity and quality of life. So it is, it is a massive problem here and globally. And the data is so clear that, that mental health is clearly related to food. The SMILES trial was a great example of taking you know, uh, patients with depression and either randomizing to a whole foods healthy diet or their typical processed diet. And the outcomes were as good as any other intervention or better. Um, and even, you know, behavioral issues we see uh, in kids, for example, disruptive behaviors, ADD, cognitive issues, and, and juvenile detention centers by simply swapping out uh, the junk food and giving them healthy food, they were able to reduce violent behavior by 91%, suicides by 100%. I mean, think about it. <laughs> we have suicide as a third leading cause of death in this age group of teenage boys. And if you could reduce that by 100%, with a drug, that would be a blockbuster drug, but you don't hear about the connection between food and mood. So we really have an opportunity to reset our brain health and our mood and our overall well-being by upgrading the quality of the information that we consume in food uh, by eating food as medicine, the right medicines, and and really reclaim our brains and our mental health. Uh, and, and it's important because people understand you can get you know, overweight or get diabetes from eating bad food, but people don't understand that their mental health is so determined by the quality of what they eat.